In this video, I'll show you everything you need to know about package size tiers for your Amazon product. And by knowing all the package size tiers, you could potentially save a lot of money with freight costs, storage fees, and FBA fees that Amazon is charging you. Hi, this is Tomer from SourcingMonster.com, where I share videos and tutorials related to Amazon FBA and e-commerce. I'm a seven-figure seller and I share all the info here for free. I'm not trying to promote any course or trying to sell you anything. Now, as we go through this video, if you find value in it, make sure you give me a thumbs up and you also subscribe to the channel. And all links for everything I'm going to mention in this video will be in the description below. Okay, so as I explained in the intro, uh, by changing your packaging or by understanding the package size tiers could potentially save you a lot of money. It could save you money with the FBA fees. FBA fees, for those that don't know, are the fees that Amazon is charging you for uh, you know, shipping and preparing the item. So the bigger or heavier the item, the more it will require to ship it and the fees will uh, be accordingly. And also it could save you money with the freight. Where do you ship sea shipping? Imagine that in, you could squeeze in one carton 100 units or you can squeeze only 20 units. So if you could, and it, I'm talking about the same weight. So if it's the same uh, weight and you can squeeze more items in each carton, that could potentially save you a lot of money. And I'm talking from experience. Why? Because I had, for example, an item that the packaging had that much space in it. And this space, it's extra, uh, like, space. And obviously, when you ship things, space is very crucial. So they will charge you more. By me, just changing the packaging and removing this extra space, I saved a ton of money. By now, with this change already, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars. With This, my, this is my best-seller item that I could, that I saved actually. If I would keep the same uh, size with this extra space, I would pay, uh, you know, for all this time that I'm selling this item, like really, literally tens of thousands of dollars. Whether that's the FBA fees that Amazon is charging me, the freight costs to ship from China to Amazon, and also for inventory charges. Inventory charges we covered. So, uh, let's just check the package size tiers that Amazon is providing us so we can understand better how it works. And what I suggest is before you source an item that you check those things. If your item or the, your, your uh, you know, your, your item could, uh, uh, you check an item to source. I'm sorry, uh, I lost my mind or track for a moment. But let's say you're trying to source an item and you see that your competitors, they have like, uh, it's a small oversized item. And how you can check it. So if you check my videos, uh, I am a big fan of Helium 10 uh, Profitability Calculator tool. And you can actually, um, uh, let's open this item for example, okay. Um, and by going scrolling down, if you have the Chrome extension installed, and you can check my previous video that I recently uploaded with the Helium 10 tutorial where I cover everything about Helium 10. But for now, Profitability Calculator. You actually see what are the dimensions of this item that is currently selling. And when you do product research, you want to make sure that you have the same credentials in order for you to be competitive with them. If you go, and right now it's large standard size, right? And if you go to, um, let's say, large oversize, and you know, you lose your competitiveness with this specific uh, seller or competitor. So you want to you make sure that your, the item that you bring to the market will not exceed the large standard size um, dimensions which are, let's say here, so for the large standard size, it could be up to 20 pounds, and the largest size could be 18 inches by 14 and by eight. So um, make sure that you're not exceeding those if you try to source this item. Now, if you have this item already, and you just want to perform a check on making those adjustments to save a lot of money, you really want to analyze your packaging. And I have really my packaging guy in China that uh, produce all the packages that we do. He already knows how I operate. But I'll give you an example, okay? If it would, this is like a, a, um, a deck of playing cards, okay? And if you would see, for example, you have this extra space here. Now, this is nothing because if you would remove this extra space, 
it will be very hard to take those cards out. But if you have a product and for example, you analyze and you see on one side, or it's a mix of items like different sizes and, and, and shapes, uh, you could potentially make adjustment to the item. I don't know, create a folding mechanism if it's a really long one or uh, squeeze them in a more efficient way by sorting them and organizing them inside the packaging better. You have to really be creative and think uh, on it from a point that you can really save a ton of money. So this is uh, the process that I did with some of the products at the beginning that I wasn't really efficient enough. Now this is guidelines that we follow for every new item that we do. We really try to minimize the spacing that we do as much as we can. And it also comes to when you source a product with bundling, you want to make sure that the bundling items that you bring are not too heavy or too long. Okay, So let's go back to those sections by knowing all of those product tiers. And you can check the link uh, uh, to Seller Central. We'll put it down in the description. By knowing all of that, you could really potentially save a lot of money. And now, well, how we can do it? So make your packaging smaller. I talked about it. Bags versus boxes. So if you follow me, I'm a big believer and fan of creating packaging for your products. This is for me a must. And in very rare cases, I would go with bags. Bags, if you do them, make sure that you create really... Uh, a nice experience for the customer and designing a nice bag for you, not just a poly bag that looks like nothing, that is transparent. Try to create a nice environment. But sometimes, and I have two products like that, sometimes it would make more sense to ship it in a bag. And when you ship something in a bag, you can squeeze much or uh, many or ma ma many more units in each cardon. And again, this is a big plus because you could ship uh, for much cheaper from China to Amazon and also for everything would be cheaper. So if it makes sense, yeah, do it with bags. Like I said before, don't bundle it with heavy or long items. When you're actually sourcing item, when you know this info that I'm sharing with you here now, you could potentially save money and make better decision when, you know, in the uh, uh, sourcing uh, process. Sometimes, okay, so sometimes Amazon will put it in the wrong tier and it happened to me. So it's uh, meet the criteria of the large standard size, for example, but for some reason they will market as large oversized. You, of course, want to make sure that you check those things after your item checked in. You want to check under which tier your product is falling or which tier Amazon determined that your product is. And if they did a mistake, of course, contact them to fix that. Tell them these are the measurements. Why did you uh, market or determine that it's this size tier? You know, um, if you change your packaging after the first batch, you have to let Amazon remeasure it. So this is a big thing. Like I told you, I had one product that did the big, the first batch, it had a big extra space. So I said, okay, I'm going to figure it after, you know, it's selling. And it did sell well and I had to reorder. On my second order, we did fix it. And then we shipped the second batch to Amazon. Amazon won't just change it like that. They might, but it's very rare that they will do it. Um, so you have to really open a case with them and ask them, look, we did change the packaging. It is smaller right now and we want you to remeasure it. It will take them, if I'm not wrong, we did it now to one of our products uh, because it was under the wrong tier. It took them three to five business days. They fixed, actually in Europe, they fixed it and it saved me three euros, three euros in FBA fees per product. This is crazy. Imagine you sell 100 units of day from that. That's 300 euros profit to your pocket a day and 9,000 uh, 9, euros profit every month. So, you know, this is really could potentially save you a ton of money. Make sure from time to time to monitor your FBA fees. And for any movement, uh, I did have... A, okay, so make sure that you monitor your uh, the FBA fees. Have a table and make sure you have the quarter check that the prices didn't change because like I told you they could do mistakes and charge you wrong tiers or could charge you different FBA fees now after you set with your fees and you know that they are correct you can um, you know lock it or write it put there in a note somewhere and then when uh, time comes to really perform this check every quarter you can compare the prices you had originally to the prices that you have now in Salon Central you can see it under manage FBA inventory um, and then if they change, you can come and ask them. People don't really track it. 
and because you don't track it you can't really know if they did a mistake or if something changed so make sure that you track it and you check it once in a while just to be sure the safe side that they didn't change uh, your fees or anything like that now when you have one or two products it's not a big deal but yeah, when you become uh, more successful and have more and more items it becomes a challenge that's why you have to create a process for that like I did so uh, for now that's everything that I have to share with you about product size tiers I'm sure uh, you got value out of it and with any questions like always this is free take advantage of this you can ask your questions down below in the comment section I am personally answering to these questions and usually if you would come and ask me those questions I will charge you fees but I'm trying to provide as much value as I can in this uh, uh, free YouTube channel uh, videos and tutorials thank you very much for watching I'll see you in the next video